Sounds good. Okay, well, uh, then, in that case, welcome back to another episode of uh, Journey to the Radiant Citadel in our Tuesday game. Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, you guys have just yeah. arrived in the Land of God's Breath, having competed in uh, some events in the Radiant Citadel, where... Uh, was it was it Avant that came out on top? It was yes. Avant. Nice. By a technicality, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As the dust cleared, there stands Avant, and uh, yeah, that did earn you a fair amount of renown in the, the Radiant Citadel itself. Finn! Um, oh. Must remember OBS can hear me even when I'm not pushing to talk, I'm shouting my dog in the background. Um, but anyway, we're picking up at the festival, the, the Awakening Festival. Uh, so we spoke a bit about that, but uh, everyone comes together to kind of, it, it is a very mystical uh, experience it's not something that is just done differently here it is very much kind of uh, their song carries the weight of the land it carries the feeling of the memories of the people it definitely means something to them you can see they're a very history orientated people um, you can see stories kind of weave uh, woven into baskets uh, uh, what would be the phrase I'm looking for here depicted using kind of various pictographs of people performing mundane tasks or uh, fighting off creatures etc etc and as you come walk through the streets which is kind of where we pick up of the town of promise uh, the feeling of uh, it's, it's just a good feeling people no one's turning you away because you're foreigners people are passing you uh, strange treats that you've never experienced before um, and for the most part it is it's, it's an interesting experience. Now, I believe we ended up with you meeting up with Aunt, uh, Aunt Deli. You, you yeah, yes. Yeah, you spoke a couple of sentences to her. So, well, let me just give you an idea of what we're working with here. Get you onto this map. As you kind of look through the town square, people uh, moving through, you can see... Uh, let me just double check here. You can see a um, procession coming through, uh, representing the uh, the dawn incarnate that is um, that is representative of the people here. I'm just trying to. Where's my dawn incarnate here? One second. Seriously, dawn incarnates, dawn incarnates. I cannot find it for the life of. Uh, okay, I'll get back to that in a moment. So, Delhi, you spoke to her a bit, and she spoke to you a bit about the land, how they live and farm along a strip of red crimson soil called the Ribbon. And further out than that, you have the lands of, the, they call it the Rattle. Um, there's lots of dangerous creatures, it is uncivilized. Uh, the land is fertile enough to grow, not kind of supercharged with minerals the way that the Ribbon is, but... Um, there is, uh, let's see here, passive perceptions of 13, there's definitely something worrying her as she speaks about the lands of the rattle, uh, but she kind of hides it as she looks back over at the festival ha uh, underway in front of her in the town. Is there anything you guys want to ask in particular while you have her in front of you here? Why do you look so worried about that rattle area? Um, she looks back over, kind of uh, thinking if she should say anything or not, back at the the, um, the joyous occasions happening in front of her. Uh, and then she does kind of turn back to you all. Uh, and you got you got to kind of lean in slightly to hear what she's saying. Um, each year, for the last couple of years, it would appear that the, uh, the lands of the ribbon are shrinking the soil recedes and this has pushed more and more farmers to resort to moving out into the rattle to be able to sustain themselves you know what's causing it she shakes her head i wish uh, we have we have a lot of smart people working on it but uh, this is it's almost as if the gods themselves are sweeping the land aside which makes no sense and we offer prayers and we receive only vague reassurances from the gods 
That is concerning. Do you think any will think will happen over this uh, a song of awakening that might cause it to escalate? I shouldn't think so. It's a time when uh, the people are brought to together at least, uh, bringing the memories of the past into the forefront. Uh, she kind of looks over uh, towards some kids dancing around wearing uh, jasper masks representing uh, just the crystal associated with God's breath here. Uh, the people are simple, but they live happy lives. Uh, and we provide a lot of the exports that head to the Radiant Citadel. Hmm. Well, thank you for answering my question. It's the only one I have at the moment. That's fine. Hmm. I, I Why think... is it called the Rattle? Uh, it is from stories of time long past. Um, a, a king tried to retake the lands and uh, unfortunately fell to the poisons of a snake. And it was to describe the painful last breaths he experienced and for all to remember to stay out of the lands of the wilds. <coughs> it's a powerful okay, message. Good. Name for a snake. Uh, she looks around. It is. Uh, we lose a lot of people too. They were giant coyotes, uh, bullets, uh, other various uh, savage creatures. Uh, but the thing is, the bullets. Yeah. yeah. As she is uh, moving to say another question, uh, you hear a cry from the crowd. Uh, someone screaming and you look over to see a couple of figures a couple of farmers kind of shambling forward looking unhealthy it's hard to put a word on it um until you see one of them kind of lunge forward at another figure here with a sickle in their hand and just swipe and this figure kind of throws themselves to the ground to get out of the way uh, instantly kind of music cuts short uh turning into a bit of a chaotic scene as people start to uh, scream and panic one of them turns towards you and you can see that uh, there's definitely something wrong with them their eyes are blood red um, as if filled with the unshed tears uh, stuck in it's very disturbing uh, rather than singing they are just staring blankly um, that is concerning You said that they had like a sickle. Huh? They're armed with sickles. Sorry, I didn't put them off the GM there. They are there. So there's a number oh. of people that are like just staring blankly with sickles. Do they look like they're about to like attack the. Or I guess they did attack a villager? Yeah, they were staring blankly. Uh, they have surged forward, swiped at someone, and they seem intent to do more. You can see Aunt Delia runs for well, doesn't run forward into them, but she kind of steps forward as everyone else backs away. Edia! Edia, what are you doing? Uh, she speaks to the... She seems to recognize these people. Uh, they do not <coughs> respond, though, and are lunging out to attack folks here. I think we should subdue them, but not kill. Something's obviously wrong with them. Yeah. I, th I think that's a wise decision. They don't seem inherently bad. Once again, violence is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, as... Let's get you on the map. As you guys move forward, weapons drawn. Uh, Aunt Delia would kind of beg you, please do not kill them. I don't know what's come over them. <laughs> Of course. We won't kill them. Uh, answer for this for an L point of fury. <laughs> so who are we missing here? Two, three, four, five. Oh, that's it. Okay. Uh, let's get some rolls here. So as these, they look shambling, almost, uh, I mean, 
not so much like undead, but there's definitely kind of a jerkiness to their movements. Uh, not in their right mind at all. Uh, but alas, uh, what are you doing? I'll be moving to the one close to the people that would get an opportunity to attack against me. Yeah, it will do so. It will lash out uh, the scimitar. Well, it's a farming instrument, but yeah. Okay, it misses. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to attempt to grapple them and pull them away from the guy that they're attacking. Okay. She does kind of almost fall dead, uh, jumping around, squeezing out, but you tighten it up and yeah. Which one was that again? The one to the which side of you? This one, yeah. Okay. Officially grappled. Do you have any movement left? Uh, uh, that was... I have five feet. Okay. So you so see... I'll stay here. This figure here kind of have fo has fallen back on their haunches. It looks to be uh, kind of a teenage girl uh, who was swiped at and kind of just scrambling back as you halt this farmer from proceeding after her uh, fury. <clears throat> okay, I will wander up. That's one, two, three, four, five. I can get all the way over here. And I'll swing. All right. Which one? I guess I'll go for non-lethal damage. Lower right. Okay. <clears throat> Figures. And there's three of them. There, there were two of them turned to a last, and this one kind of turns to you as you approach. You step into the center here. 21 is going to connect. You can roll damage. Once again, it's a... What do you call it? Uh, Submissive. Non-lethal damage. Yep. It's fine. Very nice. Uh, with a single blow to the chest, you hear the figure's breath escape their body. They are visibly knocked unconscious. They're not dead. Uh, and they, like, roll crumbling to the side. Okay. I'm done. Uh, so, as these farmers... Uh, realizing that... You are definitely the uh, the danger here. They kind of turn towards uh, you and will have two scimitar swings uh, sent towards you, uh, but to no avail as uh, we go to Pino. Um, Pino will scream at one of the unwounded ones, um, you crazy fox, stop attacking your friends, and I will cast Vicious, vicious Mercury. <laughs> sure. Uh, that's yeah, that's safe. Kind of and off, as just a looks bonus... at you and like turns the head sideways with his blood red eyes. You, um, but they're crazy. I'll walk behind the van because that's fun, and I will um, give uh, a last uh, bardic inspiration. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Well, okay. So over to Avant. Uh, I think she will come up and join. You. Uh, and do some pommeling of her own uh, get onto this side and uh, she will use this weapon her rapier uh, with non-lethal uh, st creature still up and kind of want to offhand dagger attack oh I don't no, know no not, spell, not when do. blade singing not, she didn't use <laughs> Like, Regular, yeah. She didn't use blade singing because I thought you wouldn't want to waste it for this. But a ten will miss regardless. Uh, Nablina, I see your friends moving up and putting down these strange uh, a uh, ailments at farmers. What you doing? Uh, she's going to kind of tiredly walk forward, targeting. Uh, looks like I guess this one, and. Just going to cast a command spell over at them. To well, she phrases it as sleeping, <laughs> but it's actually uh, grovel. Okay. Uh, that was the one to the north, right? Yes, it is a thirteen. Very nice. Or DC. Yep, the, the head kind of uh, snaps to you. There's some kind of connection. Uh, ooh, hold on. Uh, that's a charm effect. Yeah, as you feel yourself pushing into the creature's mind, uh, 
Um, it is a charm effect, right? I don't believe so. Command is it? Check that. But it has no effect if it's undead. It doesn't understand the, my language or if it's directly harmful, but it's not a charm effect. Yeah. Command is an enchantment. Not a charm effect, that is right. Uh, so there is kind of for a moment you feel something else there, like another presence in the creature's body, uh, but it crumbles under your willpower. And you can feel that uh, your spell did take into effect. Are you staying where you are? Yep. She's just satisfied. Like, okay, good. Everyone's asleep. <laughs> uh, Alas, are you moving to restrain or what are you doing, man? I'll be moving to restrain. <clears throat> okay. And see if I can get this guy onto the ground to stop him from messing about. <laughs> Most likely. Uh, so. Get a roll from you. Yeah. Oh, you have a advantage. <laughs> only um, only to start uh, to initiate or escape grabs. Okay. <laughs> so you kind of uh, try to throw them over, wiggle wait, them wait, around. Wait. Yes. Yeah, you have a body inspiration. Use it. I do. Oh. D six. Don't worry really one. D six. It doesn't matter. Just don't worry one. I, I roll the three. Nice. Oh, Peter. <laughs> Okay, so you kind of tighten, oh. tighten your body, pull the legs together, the, the creature trips over, lands on the floor. You can see some from, uh, some of the people I promise are kind of running over with the ropes to try and help you tie this figure up. Uh, but yeah, she's restrained. Yeah, now all I'll be doing. Beautiful. Uh, so one is knocked out, Fury. Uh, there are two left, one wind, wounded already. What are you doing? Mm, let's just smack another one. Yeah, that does hit. Uh, I imagine that wasn't the one not being affected by the magic for now. What's that? I imagine you are going for the one to your left as uh, the one to the north was sure. commanded. Um, yeah, that'll be enough. Knocked unconscious in a similar fashion, drops to the ground. Uh, one enemy remaining that looks to be moving and uh taking a knee uh strangely not sure what they're doing uh they begin to get onto the ground and go into a subservient uh, kind of worshiping position uh, that'll bring us to pino um i'll just ready a, a vicious mockery if this person moves i don't actually you know, remember how comet works i would say <laughs> That's fine, it happens to all of us. Um, with this figure yeah. cowering, or groveling at the very least, uh, for a whole turn, you guys would definitely be able to kind of move up and all jump onto this figure and get it down, uh, if that's what you'd like to do, seeing as it's the last one left. Yeah, probably. Um, but I'm not going to be able to take them down. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm standing right back there. like, go guys! <laughs> Good That's job. fine. So, as some of the people... Oh, thank you! Let me help you there. Come running in and uh, kind of and kick the weapons away, uh, start throwing nets or tying up with rope. Uh, Aunt Delia approaches as well. Aunt Delia approaches as well. Uh, so people have started kind of joining around and you hear sounds of kind of, what is happening? What is wrong with their eyes? They tried to attack me. They almost hurt Aria. Um, everyone's just kind of, the, the song of awakening has moved to the background. It's just like a, a whisper amongst the people now. No, no, everybody calm down and go back to your song. We will handle this. Please go back to your music. Or else we'll start, like, pulling these guys away from the common grab yep. and turn to... What's the lady's name? Uh, Aunt Deli. Uh, Deli, and be like, do you have any place to put these guys? Well, first of all, who were they? She will... Uh... Kind of look to the nearest building uh, and walk to the door where you can see another uh, s another town member has kind of been looking out and uh, she sp says something to them before turning to you guys. We can't bring them in here. Uh, we should be safe. Well, they should be safe. Uh, we can put them in one of the rooms uh, in the tavern uh, 
as she will help you guys begin to escort them inside, kind of out of the general, um, you know, main town square. Once inside, you can see, yeah, it is a tavern, uh, that is a small tap room that isn't really uh, too busy at the moment. Everyone's kind of gone outside uh, for the song. And you can hear that kind of half-heartedly, once uh, the bodies have been moved, the song kind of starts to uh, slowly come up in tempo again. Uh, you asked Damien as, as your fury. Who, <clears throat> who were these people? Um, they are they're farmers from the Rattle. Uh, in fact, what is... Uh, she kind of looks over uh, the bodies here. Uh, I'm sure I've seen some of these in town before, uh, trading with us. Yes, this one's uh, this one's name is Lena, uh, one of the female farmers. Um, and let's see here, is the highest passive perception in the group thirteen? Yeah. Okay. Are you guys doing any kind of checks or uh, looking overs or anything like that? I'm not sure. Uh, I would be giving a look over at the body to see if there's any bite marks or okay. like obvious place like wound mm, that's happened to sure. infect him or something. Yeah, uh, investigation, medicine, survival, um, all be fairly appropriate. Survival? Uh, so, they don't show any, uh, any, any wounds indicating you know, snake bites, anything like that. In fact, they look perfectly healthy as far as their outward appearance goes, besides the blood red eyes, of course. Well, that is concerning. Has this ever happened before? Uh, you can see she's turning back from the counter where she's gotten a glass of beer, of meat, and uh, she's shaking her head, taking a sip. Um, she's just, she looks shocked. Surprised as you are. One thing you do notice, alas, is one of the farmers, um, one of the hands is kind of crumpled shut, and you do see bits of parchment kind of sticking out between the fingers. I'll just be taking that. <laughs> Try to like force open his hand to take it out without damaging it. Yeah, he's simple enough. Seems to be a charcoal sketch. Uh, a, quite a, discur a disturbing. Uh, it looks to be a charcoal sketch of a child struggling to swim uh, in dark water while being pulled at by hands. Well, that is very concerning. Uh, Dublina, uh, is there any magical nonsense going on with that? You know, do any of you guys know if there's any magical nonsense going on here? I've that seems more of the psycho um, var var variant. There's very much, yes, very <laughs> much a foot because I cast a spell earlier. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is still a bit concerning, but it didn't hurt anybody. No, you know what's saying? It's, it's a party. It's not hurt anyway. <laughs> she just yawns and like tries to lay her head down on the fountain. <laughs> Blina, I I need you to focus up. You said you felt like all the magic going on. Is there she anything she, else? She says she cast a spell. There was definitely magic. <laughs> uh, I think what she's that. trying to say. It's that it's not magical. <laughs> it's it's just some crazy person drew it, probably. She has no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like looking at the red eyes. It's like, that does not look like crazy person eyes. That looks like a controlled person with drugged person eyes. Can I yeah. examine the bodies and see if there's anything that can be learned from them? Yeah, what skills are you trying to find? Just general investigation? Yes. <laughs> yep, let's have it. Okay, can I use uh, guidance with it? Yes. Okay. Okay. I get the die four. Four. Oh. 
15. Um, so, I mean, they... Let's see here, that's a good question. For the most part, they look fairly healthy. Uh, for farmers, I mean, their, their work is pretty rough and their body reflects that. Uh, you can see though a lot of, one thing that sticks out I would say is you notice that a lot of them have kind of a braided fingertips uh, one or two even kind of have cracked nails that have looks like they've just been ripped off from some kind of uh, blunt force Your fingernails are missing no not not in general but uh, all of them look like they've been doing something that have damaged their fingers like digging like trying to like dig through yeah. a rock or something like that you know Huh. The figure of Aunt Delia will kind of suck in some air as she gasps, seeing the drawing over your shoulder. I recognize this. This was done by my goddaughter, Kiana. She snatches the picture from you, kind of scanning it over. Have you seen it before? Uh. <laughs> See? I was right. It wasn't a, a crazy person. <laughs> Not crazy. Yeah, no, man, we don't know if. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We don't know if they're crazy or not. They might just be seriously depressed. She, she had a difficult childhood. Uh, she saw uh, her friend Kali drown in Cradle Lace Lake while they were playing, um, and since then, she has she's used her art to kind of work through her sadness and guilt. I, I feel she still carries. The fact is, though, that. She was working on a farm in the Rattle, about a half a day from Promise. I was starting to worry because I hadn't seen her, and now this. I know this is not... Well, maybe me. we need to go and have a check. What was her name again? Kiana. I'll put it in chat. Liana. Uh, Kiana, with a K. Kiana. Like Kiana Reeves, but it's a, it's a girl. Some names. This might not be your job, but seeing how well you handled those folks out there, I, I, if you would be able to maybe check my goddaughter as safe, um, I, I will see what I can put together in terms of a monetary reward for you. And, um, you, you would not be underpaid, I promise. When are we due back at the Citadel? When the festival's over, it lasts a couple of days. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I can't see any reason why we wouldn't check it out. Yeah, s s seems like a big um, safety hazard to leave this unchecked. She nods. I will get some of the men from the village, get them armed, and have them prepared in case any of these things happen. Uh, we will have sacks and rope uh, to capture these people. And uh, For now, uh, she looks over, and you guys are in a, in a tap room in this house where your party token is, and on the other side of the hall uh, kind of one of the uh the rooms for rent you can see these people kind of tied to chairs wriggling around and squirming but i imagine you've gagged them and kind of made them quite secure yeah uh otherwise we'll go back over and ungag one of them and see if i can get any like be like uh do you can tell us why you attacked us why you attack people anything is there anything uh, going on what's the last thing you remember I'm more thinking if they even comprehend and able to speak, so. Yeah, let me just double check here. <laughs> so, the, as the farmers kind of look uh, towards you, their eyes dart in your direction, registering that you are the one that speaks. Kind of one of their mouths opens slightly, and you just hear this like, uh, there's like breath rattling out of it, but none of them uh, try to speak to you. Mm -hmm. Seems like they want to say something, but they can't. I'm gonna like check that pulse. Something they can't say something to us. Can you blink? Hmm. There's no response from them. They don't blink. Mm -hmm. They hear what you're saying. They're taking it in, but there's there's just no reciprocation of 
uh, that you so in other words the there. wheels turning but the hamster's dead <laughs> and their hearts are beating as you kind of feel for a pulse they 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 are alive hmm. is it an inside check roll to see if you can gauge their reaction to what i'm saying to get some try and get it garner some information yeah i'd say that's a for instance if i say something like did somebody do this to you and i get an answer from uh, intuitively uh, divining their response, whether fear or situational you know, the reaction. It's, it's a possibility of, of you know, like the most extreme situation, but you can attempt it. Yeah, so I'm gonna attempt. I ask some leading questions and see if I get a reaction. Did this? Who did this to you? Was it some kind of wizard? Was it some kind of Probably a wizard, to be honest. It's always the wizard. Is there any kind of re different reaction when I name different types of creatures or Have beasts? You made your role? I don't people? see it. Oh, is it an investigation or is it inter is interrogation? Or insight is appropriate. Intimidation? You, can, you can roll insight. Okay. Oh, natural. Yeah. Uh, so, as far as you can tell, I mean, their eyes seem to generally move to those who talk, and that's about the most reactions they give. It's, yeah. Okay. Those are worth what, a shot. What if we're being watched? Through their eyes. You think Let's so? Let's laugh all the more like it right now. Go back to sleep. <laughs> I think this is a good idea. Delhi starts to <laughs> grab some blindfolds as well. I, I, maybe I will assign a guard and we just close the door for now. It's just kind of tick, 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 like locks I the door. I think that's good, yes. God, you say the most terrifying things, Nablina. Oh? <laughs> well, I mean, they were looking at people and their eyes are strange. It's not impossible for someone else to be looking through your eyes. Right? And yet, and yet, it's still terrifying, isn't it? Yeah, it's still you know. quite terrifying. I'm not scared. Thank God for you. <laughs> Stronger people than most. You see Aunt uh, Delia's kind of taking a couple of shots in the background. <sighs> Definitely not impressed. Do try to stay it a bit sober, please. Yeah, yeah. You are the sort of leader here. I need you on top game after this. Oh, but it's a party, well, right? He is right. Uh, the, I am um, at least, especially after what has happened, wanting to stay on top of things tonight. I shall go and see what kind of monetary reward I can put together for uh, undertaking this uh, this journey for me. Well, thank you, family. As she moves towards the door, you see a broad-shouldered woman wearing a multicolored dress. Uh, that uh, kind of does complement her dark skin, uh, steps up, um, looking at uh, Aunt Deli and looking kind of over her towards you. Um, I overheard your, your conversation. Uh, it seems like you folks are heading out to the rattle. Uh, Aunt Deli, if it's all the same to you, I've got uh, a cart and I was planning on heading out there soon. I would, wouldn't mind accompanying your friends here. Uh, we should depart fairly soon if we want to beat the uh, if we want to beat the time who are you she looks over uh, towards you uh, i'm known as lady dre to most nice to meet you she kind of holds out her hand to shake yours if you wanted to get there in a timely manner i've got a caravan uh, we can make much easier travel through the lands what kind of That's caravan also oh, can Normally. That's be nice asking for free bodyguards. <coughs> she gives you a broad smile. Uh, well, at least you seem sharp as well. That's always a good, good trait to have out in the rattle. Uh, she, I, I normally bring goods from the farms back to Promise, uh, but now I've got a whole empty, uh, empty wagon. Okay, so you're a teamster. Okay. 
Do you have rounds that you're going to be making? Is that what, or do your rounds include the, the lady over here? Uh, her name was. I, I recognize these folks here. Um, Aria, Marisra, Amatia. They are from a, a folk. They are from a farm that I have a bit of a stake in. So I would like to make sure everything's going all right out there. Well, obviously it's not if they're here committing, I don't know, attacks on town folk. So uh, I think it's fair to assume something has gone wrong out at the farm. All the more reason to get out there and find out if we can help. Okay. What kind of wagon you got? Okay, stop. What's that, Alas? Oh, I like her style. It's straightforward and she knows what she wants. I said we'd take her up on it. I don't mind either way. <laughs> well, Might be helpful. We can at least travel in comfort. I had some benches put in. Uh, you can sit, we can sleep. Uh, I would suggest keeping a little bit of a vigil as uh, we have to worry about the wild animals and such, but. Looks around. And what if we go there and they're all dead? Then what? Are you asking this to Lady Dre? Yeah. Then I've lost a rather large investment that I put in a group of farms out there. You're kind of tutting mm. sound from Aunt Delia. She's not so happy with kind of a wanton, um, you know, uh, treating of life. Mm. Well, how about we hope for the best? in this situation. So I don't particularly want a bunch of people to be dead. Did you come here for the well, Hopefully we'll find too? whoever did this to her. I did, yes. Uh, always the best tunes and voices to be heard in Promise. And being one of the bigger towns, it makes selling goods rather easy. What do you sell? bit of everything, whatever the farms out here in the rattle produce, mostly vegetables, fruits, uh, all the stock that are not of the grade to be shipped to the Radiant Citadel, uh, ends up going to the market here. I think... What did you think invest in? Take you up on this. I'm curious about the investment. Coins. Worker? I am uh, an opportunity taker. I mean, the people that live out in the rattle have to look after each other, so they tend to move out in groups to set up little communities. Uh, some of these were a bit short on uh, money for tools and such, so uh, I help the communities get started. Mm. Do you more or less invest of sorts? Correct. Sounds like a loan shop. <laughs> they pay me back mm -hmm. by using me as their merchant. You know, doing my kind of crazy interest to you. Oh, you talking business and we just met. Don't you want to get on your way? I'm more than happy to tell you. I want to practices. find out what kind of person I'm dealing with. <laughs> uh, sure. What was the, the repeat the question for me? Does she charge some kind of ridiculous interest rate or something like that? No. We gotta look after each other, especially people out on the rattle. With the lands of the ribbon receding, it's getting harder for everyone. And the more brave folk that are prepared to move out to the rattle, the better it is for everyone. You're welcome to inside check that. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I remember. Uh... Let's see. Do you farm sugarcane? Sugarcane? Uh, hmm. That's an oddly specific question. Not, uh, not by any means uh, large crops, but I think maybe here and there you might find some. Maybe closer down to the tributaries leading into the oceans. 
Oh, good. So you do farm them. You do have farms with them? Then I want to talk the business as well. Okay. I mean, I personally don't deal with any of these farms, but I could put out some feelers and uh, see who does. Talk the business. <laughs> I'm always happy to take on new partners. Uh, we'll see what we can do for you, sweetie. How far away is this farm from town? Will we be able to get there quickly, or is it going to be an all-day venture? It should be about uh, half a day's travel, until he replies. Oh, so we can be there by lunch, or mid-afternoon. Well, it is afternoon now, and the sun is pretty much set at this point. Uh, so, oh, so we can get there by tonight? You might even consider setting out in the morning instead. D depending on how uh, confident you are traveling at night and desperate you are to get there. Speed mm. might be important because whatever did this may or may not be getting further away from the location. And might uh, clues might and be getting might do, And also might be doing this to other people. I'm just saying, we got a better chance of meeting up with whoever did this if we go sooner rather than later. Mm. I do agree with you on that point. Okay. I don't know. I'll, conf uh, I'll start to say something and I'll stop because everybody well, seems what? to agree. Oh, uh, no. Well, what's your point of view? I'd like to hear it. No, I, I think I'm brave enough to go. Um, Oh, I'm brave enough to go alone, but uh, yeah. like at night. But I don't know if we're equipped enough, you know. You all, I mean. What kind Maglina. of what kind of equipment do you need to walk at night? <laughs> uh, the, like it's... nods vigorously, and she stretches after almost <laughs> like a, taking a long nap. But she seems to be completely awake now, and she looks around for more mead. So, we're good with leaving now? Uh, I believe it's to be for the best. We leave now. Okay. But, uh, one question, Lady, uh, Lady Frey, do you know Kat and the location where she lives? Um, I've traveled there a fair amount of times. Uh, I mean, at night is fairly dangerous, but uh, we pretty much got to travel north into the rattle, so the sun will probably rise before we get close. Uh, should be able to manage it. The horses don't turn a hoof, but for the most part, the lands in the ribbon are fairly well kept. And you believe we'll be safe enough if we travel at night, not? Thought we'd be safe enough here, the Awakening Festival, and I was proved wrong. We provide our own safety. We can go now. Typically, until we get out into the true rattle, we don't have to fear for our lives as much. And uh, it will take a fair couple of hours to leave uh, the ribbon. So, if, probably for the darkest of the night, you guys will still be kind of general uh, populated farmlands. Well then, I, I think we should head off. I'm good with that. Okay. Lena, finish your drinks. Huh? And try not to get too drunk. <laughs> or bring it with you. Oh, if you yeah, try to get close to... Completely to go. Yeah. If you, if you try to take, like, rummage through uh, Pino's things, he'll just cast a minor illusion of made on the ground, so you go there instead. Be like, oh, look! Abena! <laughs> That's yours! <laughs> she's not, like, rifling. She's, like, honestly just asking for... Uh, oh, okay. Like, drinks or kegs or something for everybody, because that's equipment for the night. It's a party, <laughs> so we need to be properly equipped. <laughs> equipment, of course. She took your one seriously. I don't drink any. She just hands you something anyway. Yeah, I drink it all. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah, you kind of um, after hours in this tavern as though it's kind of closed for the festival. Um, but the owner was kind of pulled in by Delhi when this happened to store these people, and uh, she is behind the counter. The owner, at least, kind of uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? She's not too happy about it, but she's still serving you guys at the at the behest of Aunt Delia, especially seeing as you are doing this favor for the town. <laughs> Why didn't she want to? Begrudging. Yeah. 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 The owner of the tavern wanted to. Uh, Wanted to leave, and it's not really serving people. Yeah. You guys are the only one in here. <laughs> it's not even making money, basically. Yeah. We're just holding it up for just just Free because uh, they needed we needed someone. <laughs> well then, finish your drinks. So we'll bring them with you, but let's head off. As he carries a jug with him, even though he doesn't drink it. <laughs> Ooh, one of those masks too. The children were wearing masks. Pretty Jasper masks. I thought you had a mask already. Huh? No. She has no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> she wants. You're talking to, to the wrong. Mask. You're talking to the wrong. Um. The wrong Nablina, I guess. I think. <laughs> Okay. This other character, I don't think Pino knows. I that. just imagine. I just imagine she had a bunch. <laughs> nope. Not yet. No? She hasn't gone to collect them from the children yet, but she will. As soon as outside. Jeez. Ah, oh, you need to be held on a leash. Are you going <laughs> to get a leash? <laughs> no, but. Uh... Oh, actually, considering it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good idea though. Wow. She's she go robbed all the maps. children. <laughs> She'll collect one for each person in the party. Sweet. <laughs> nice. Um, from the from the kids or from some of the stands nearby. Um, but Trevor is closer. Okay. Uh, yeah. If I yes, Pino. I Pino does not like. It's only soft spot is kids, honestly. So if he, if he sees like her taking from any any kids, he'll pay them for the mask and like point like apologize oh, i feel bad <laughs> she disappears that's just horrible and comes back with a couple of uh, jasper carved masks for you guys um you can see the vines kind of moving up the side a lot of uh, green uh, imagery as uh, the uh, their dawn incarnate is the pecan tree i believe Right. It'd be kind of funny that most of the Dawn Incarnate's animals of some sort, then there's just like, you know, a few trees in there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, back Wait. home, there's trees. There's a very particular special tree. It's the prettiest tree ever. Is that your Dawn Incarnate from where you're from? Yes. Not the Dawn Incarnate. The dream incarnate. Really more of a night tree. Um, um, I completely understand what you're talking about, and I believe that's a fantastic thing. What the fuck is she talking about? No one knows. Hmm. Oh, we're well, then, I... Nibelina starts running towards the cart, or a cart. Yeah, Lady Dre's kind of spun off and got in the, getting the horses ready. Uh, you meet her at the side of town, and kind of you can hear the, the music behind you as part of a warm celebration that you are now kind of on the outside of as you look into the dark countryside. Uh, a bit of moonlight uh, giving... Uh, giving you a bit of an idea what you're working with here at the moment it's just kind of farmlands as far as you can see as people huddle together it looks like every little bit of land that can be worked is being worked here with these uh, kind of uh, thin roads moving between them all as uh, you can see this kind of blood red soil that uh, well it's, it's hard to make out at night especially um, and it looks like the land is just uh, wreathed in darkness uh, but with lady dre at the helm uh, she's got 
a fairly comfortable wagon that she's added seats and a table to and even there's been a uh, tarp thrown over the top so uh, you are protected from the weather somewhat you guys uh, get comfy if anyone wants to ride up front with me i'll be happy for the company otherwise we got a good couple of hours till anything's going to change really and she uh, whoops the horses into action as the cart begins to draw uh, move into the darkness I'll, yeah, uh, actually that. I'll, I'll sit on the last. I'll I'll sit on the last head. No, like, <laughs> I don't think it matters. I guess, but Pina will keep um, telling his stories until anyone starts. That's true. <laughs> I'll ask her to enjoy them. We'll just sit back and enjoy the stories. Uh, anything in particular? Um, I think uh, seeing how there's like seems to be like a crazy like eyed people he'll probably tell stories about like he get, gets associations to cults so he'll be like i once defeated a cult by just uh, by by just changing their mind about their, their ideas and it was you don't even know how persuasive i am it's, it just it's like goes off on a nice. crazy story okay i got a question can i recall when when we had the uh the uh villagers that were attacking people you said they had ruined nails. Did it look like they had been clawing dirt or like wood or like stone? Uh, it, it was abraded. It wasn't kind of like ground down to the. Were nuts. the hands dirty? So you can hear me, right? Yeah. yeah were there? Were there? Were there? What do you call it? Hands dirty? There was traces of old dirt there. Yes. Okay, but no, like wood. Wood uh, splinters no. under the fingernails, or or stone chips, maybe. No stone chips. I mean, maybe maybe a couple, but um, nothing that indicates like cement or kind of building material, or anything like that. Uh, kind of hard to identify. Mm. Okay. This is quite the vehicle now, isn't it? Uh, kind of Lady Dre. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Um, she looks around at all the, you see kind of flickering lights on in all the little farms you go by, leading it to be this uh, kind of dotted landscape of beautiful lights as uh, the trees block most of the, uh, most, most of the kind of the sound traveling along this generally uh, flat land, but you can still pick up words of the awakening song <coughs> sung even out here uh, by the families in the farmhouses around you as it kind of feels like the song is making its way uh, across the land and as you can hear some of the melodies come to your ear you you start to hear some more of the tales of the people and um, kind of their, their generals their uh, their upbringing things like that it's, it's a very strange each, experience yes does each person sing a different version of the song that's like personalized like they add in their own little family and then they have like a few heroes that they add in from the main story is that how it works so it is um well i mean you could ask lady dre right uh, yeah so i ask her people add in their own ways but the song is the same uh, the proclaimers uh, they are the ones that um, go out and oh find new deeds and record the tales of people to immortalize uh, in the song for later um, recollection so it changes periodically it changes uh, information is added to it but what is there it stays oh, okay so it's just getting ever longer in a way suppose it is it might be interesting maybe in a couple of decades to see how long the festival lasts mm. might be a bump of sale she looks around yeah I mean, things are things are changing here uh, it looks a bit nervous maybe not for the not for the best biting a lip a bit as the horse is kind of move down turning down another lane as you head kind of into uh, a valley between two vast mountain ranges um, people are what do you mean by 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, pe you go. People are, it feels they're not as close as they used to be. Um, now, the, the people here, you understand, must, uh, they worship the Covenant Gods, a group of five uh, deities that helped our people come to this land and, and cultivate uh, the ribbon. And it used to be that people would worship the Covenant, uh, you know, um, and sing their praises, uh, worship what they've done for the betterment of the people. And she kind of stops for a moment thinking to herself, get these names and she lists them off for you Muldar hand now okay another thing I realize I, I'm probably butchering this lady's accent and changing it completely I don't know why this one's so difficult for me you just got to roll with me here um, uh, Muldar is the god that covers uh, the death and uh, people's conversion into the song of awakening uh, Setos controls and looks after the nature and the people Thomas is the one that set down the laws when we when we originally settled in these lands and uh, Zidia deals with bringing in new birth working in tandem with Muldar and finally Kore is that little bit of chaos that makes everything work together they made things run pretty smoothly around here but recently churches have started the word uh, defining their uh, defining their area of religion so to say instead of worshiping the covenant they would be a church to Setos or, or a Muldar or and I don't know why but people are seemingly splitting uh, some of the towns following one some following another because of uh, friction between the groups Shrugs. If there can be friction between the gods, surely they're beyond that kind of stuff. No, I'm not talking about the gods. I'm talking about the people that worship the particular gods. There's no unkindness between these people. They are still brothers and sisters and cousins. Um, there's just a separation. It's hard to hard to describe, really, to outsider. Which one's your favorite? <laughs> <laughs> she smiles. Uh, it's kind of bright uh, white. Well, I'm kind of partial to Thomas myself. Uh, if I have to pick one, uh, any god that allows me to trade and get more coin in my pocket is all right by me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Oh. Yes, yes. Do you think this fish between the separation of groups might have something to do with this madness that's come over some people? And if it if it does, I, I can't see why. I mean, I'm not sure who those people followed, but surely that can't be it. Kind of looks around. Most of the outlying farmers now that people are. Uh, kind of picking their own direction they most tend towards Setos kind of watching over the crops praying for a bountiful harvest uh, some also Zidia as they want to bring new life into their communities How it hmm. works. and then you realize I mean you guys have been traveling for a while now uh, you've spoken about other things, I'm sure, not just the length of this current conversation we've had. As you've been traveling uh, past these kind of endless farmlands, uh, you kind of feel a jolt as uh, the cart starts to hit bumpier track. Um, look at the kind of manicured road disappearing as you realize you've left the farmland areas. And for a moment, you're trying to realize, you're trying to think what's, what's different. It's like something's missing. And you realize you can no longer hear the Song of Awakening. You've kind of moved away from all the houses. Um, and the silence is kind of the first time you've heard it since you've been here. It's almost slightly unsettling. But you begin to hear the kind of crickets chirping, animals uh, moving around, going about their nightly business. As you're in the early hours of the morning, like 3, 3 a.m. around there. Um, is that when we come upon the farm? 
that's when you leave the ribbon and head into the lands of the rattle. So at this point, uh, Delia would kind of <coughs> wake up. I think everyone should be awake for these parts, dears. Uh, we've got to keep an eye out and make sure we aren't set upon by anything unsavory. Very well done. So, if anyone wants to give me a perception check, uh, if they are keeping watch, or any other kind of check, if you're doing something else, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So she herself is, uh, she herself is also kind of keeping an eye as much as he can, but also trying to just watch the road and you see the quality of light start to increase as a bit of uh, a bit of light creeps into uh, the sky uh, you can see uh, what looks to be this kind of ball of molten uh, moving up on the horizon it's slightly different shade to okay well you're all from different places uh, so from the slightly different shade from the Feyrood sun for those of you who experience that and uh, larger as well begins to kind of head up into the sky and immediately the heat begins to uh, the heat begins to kind of cut away the cold of the morning even though it's still fairly early like 4 or 5 a.m. the lands you're walking through become more forested uh, trees everywhere bushes uh, you start to make out on the distant rise a group of ramshackle buildings that's kind of the first civilization that you've seen since coming out here uh, and this brings us to about, probably about 5, half past 5 a.m. Uh, the sun, I mean, the, the, it's like still a little bit twilight fading into full light as uh, it is getting light quite early here. Um, when you, I believe, here we are. Uh, I mean, the ground around you is not the, the kind of crimson it was. It's faded to a more regular kind of uh, brownie. Uh, earthy color but you hear this kind of rumbling as the cart stops and the horses uh, start uh, neighing and one kind of rears slightly at Lady Dre calming it down and it's coming from a, a nearby field so as you've started to approach these houses in the distance as they're getting closer and closer uh, you come to see them for what they are farmhouses and there are fields around them now you're starting to move through these outlying fields uh, you can hear this kind of uh, grumbling, rumbling sound that's definitely put the horses on edge. Uh, Pino, you'd be the one to notice that first. Uh, Guys, I don't like where this is going. Maybe we should stop. It's just a rattle. Don't you remember? It's a rattle. It makes noise. Get you can feel vibrations kind of through the ground. Uh, it's almost as if there's like a miniature seismic event nearby. Um, and then you kind of hear this. No! Oh! Shit! Ah! And kind of what, like an old man's voice, uh, slightly in distress. Well, fuck, I bet we better check that out. Give you an idea of what you're of looking at here. Uh, it is daytime at this point. You'd be slightly closer together. As you guys are traveling on the cart, there is a field to the north of you that is kind of this. Uh, looks to be kind of a golden uh, wheat. And that's where the rumbling is coming from. And you can hear the voice of an older man. Uh, that is you know, calling out in distress and moving in an easterly direction. Uh, the let's see. If anyone wants to try and discern what that sound is coming from, they could give me some kind of check. Uh, nature, arcana, maybe survival, also mm -hmm. appropriate. Survival, see if I. Well, I don't recognize shit. Uh, that's nothing I've heard of before. 
Just like I seem to be the only one that does know what the fuck is going on. Okay. Uh, so, Koza, uh, Neblina, and Pino, uh, from you guys kind of looking towards each other, listening to the vibrations, listening to the, the strange sounds of kind of earth getting torn asunder, uh, this seems like some kind of large burrowing creature. Ooh, like a bullet? Possibly. We did hear about bullets, yeah. Clearly, it's a giant snake. Weren't you listening to the stories? <laughs> True. I think uh, you can see Pino's like feathers starting to like perk up, and she, he looks like he's turning, like getting into fight or flight. Sure. He doesn't like this. No, situation. but I did hear rumors on a bullet, bullet, bullet. So as you kind of well, one uh, of you stands up on the cart, you can just make out over the wheat fields this kind of older man that is sprinting out of the bushes. Uh, out of the, out of the wheat uh, fields themselves into kind of an open area, and then off to the right, like just a bit off screen here, you can see a disturbance kind of ripping up these uh, the wheat stalks and just throwing them into the air as something is like tunneling through the ground at speed towards him. Hmm. Um. So I think at this point. Just to see what you guys are going to do, because it's quite a tense situation. We're going to go into initiative here. See if this old man can survive. First to react in the situation is going to be Pino. Hmm. Um. I. Will. Just look at him. <laughs> um, no, uh, I will just get my my insults ready. I guess I actually have no idea what I can do. Like I can't Fair. really see anything. So yeah. Fair enough. Now we'll give um, Avant. No, I'll give Fury because you're actually here. Uh, a bardic inspiration. All right. Okay. Uh, so that'll bring us to Avant. Uh too sure what they would want to do in the situation. Let's see here. Blade Song gives you just a plus 10 to movement, is that right? Yeah. Just. <laughs> Only. So, a mere. I think I don't want to force them to go in here. They'll leap the fence as a bonus action Blade Song to get the speed and head towards here to kind of cut them off uh, we'll say there's a dash as well Fury what you doing uh, I'm just moving straight in <clears throat> uh, you'll hear a Vaughn oh. cry out like, what is the problem what, what's going on uh, and this is like get out of the way it's coming uh, there's this old guy just like screaming terror on his face running towards a Vaughn so one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, six, down here, in space. And I will cast a shield. Hello. Hi. I'm just here. Hello. Hi, Sorry boys. about that. Oh, hey. No worries. Fine. You're risking your life to save an old man. <laughs> Sounds like an Avant thing to do, to be fair. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're still safe. It's fine. <laughs> So, okay. uh, did you dash, Fury? No. Oh, yeah, I did dash, and I cast as a bonus action, Shield of Faith. Okay. Koza, everyone else is being really proactive about this. What are you doing? Also being proactive. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. That's a little far, but... She will groggily kind of get out of the cart. Pretty, I feel like, suffering from exhaustion at this point. So we've been traveling throughout the whole night. Um, and she'll just kind of trip over the, the fence here and uh, groggily cast Bless on Fury and this old man and Avant. <laughs> you do bring up a good point, though. I think at this point everyone should be giving me a con saving throw. Oh, that's it's a moment. I just wanna check something. Nope, 
that wouldn't help. Well, good luck. <laughs> okay. Some good ones, some bad ones. A couple of bad ones. You need a constitution save? Yes, please. Ugh. Hi, Vase. Okay. <laughs> Everyone but a He's tired. Play this for the week. I don't think that's going to get you there, Avon. Sorry, very close though. Going to be short. One or two. Uh, unless you can do something else. Okay, so that means disadvantage on ability checks. Uh, but Neblina, we're still in your turn. Yep, she's cast bless on uh, oh, yeah. Fury Avant and uh, the old man here. It's like. Kind of moving up pretty slowly, but um, eventually getting within range. I hate to be a pain, but you kind of you can't see anything. You are pushing through the uh, wheat that's up higher than your head. Ah. So you can't actually see them. Wheat that's higher than your head. This is like a, a huge farm. You've pushed into croplands here. Yeah, yeah. You can see some of it's been harvested. So there's areas that are open. Is, is so this is like super wheat. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm not a, I don't know how high wheat goes in general, uh, but it is obscuring your vision. I, how tall is Neblina? She's not like it's an Amazonian, about, is she? Most wheat is like no. wheat waist higher or so, or less. I... Unless it's like, corn would be higher than your head. But if, it, if you need to see the people for bless, it just says okay. three creatures of your choice within range, but it doesn't say anything about having to see them. Oh, okay, I don't know why I thought that. Yeah, that's that's completely fine then. A weed is waist high. It's not four feet people. tall. <laughs> four feet tall. Yeah. Waist. waist waist high, maybe a little higher. Yeah, but you got a high waist. But... You can stand in and see over it. Yeah. All right. Mm. She does that anyway, and Let's that's, that's about it. <laughs> We've been on a 10,000 acre wheat farm before, and you can see it at all over the horizon. So that was uh, Fury, the old man, and who else? Sorry, Avant? Avant. Okay. Let's get all those down. Uh, well, that'll bring us around to uh, Lass. What are you doing? Uh, Lass will just move up to here and prepare to grapple whatever the fuck is chasing this old man to get us into range of him. Okay. That brings us to the old man's turn. Uh, he's, what are you doing? Why are you stopping? He looks up and you can see on the hillside above, right, just past here, where most likely his cart waits, uh, there is a farmhouse uh, kind of like a hundred feet further on the hillside. Uh, he's not stopping to convince you to go though. He, he kind of pushes past Avant. He's gonna dash and you hear he is dying. Uh, Definitely not a sprinter, but his uh, fear carries him uh, to about there. As uh, before we head to the end of the round, this creature is on the GM layer, so we do get to its turn. As it bursts up from the earth and surges forward, uh, it is indeed a bullet uh, that uses... Let me just double check how much movement we got. Do I get my uh, vicious mockery on? I don't know if that actually works on them, but... Vicious mockery. Yeah, you can uh, link it in chat for me there, quick. Oh, one moment. Can you use it on I ammo? thought I was in range. Yeah, yeah. Needs to under <laughs> need not to understand you, just hear you. So, yeah, it should work fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Did I? So it rolls. Oh, so off. yeah. If it does fail by one. Take one damage. <laughs> And uh, disadvantage on attack walls, the bigger part. Uh, well, next at attack wall, not in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's going to, you see here the kind of grinding as this creature moves closer to you, and it is going to push itself off the ground and kind of just leap up. Um, flying through the air, pretty terrifying. Uh, it's got a fairly long and high jump as it slams down uh, at Fury, and it's going to make a bite attack. Oh wait, no, it's actually it's using its deadly leap uh, ability here. So 
Uh, it's moving 15 feet, jumping 15 feet as part of its movement. Um, and it's landing. And I need a strength saving throw or a deck saving throw, the target's choice, from, uh, we'll say it's going to land here, from Fury and Alas. <laughs> Does it require a saving throw or to hit or something like that first? It's a saving throw from you guys as it slams down into the ground, rippling out with shock waves of force. Oh my. Okay. So strength saving throw, you say? Strength or dex, your choice. Okay. Strength. 16. So, you can take half damage if you succeed, if not. So, uh, you just save Fury. Uh, alas, unfortunately, you do fall prone and you are pushed five feet out of the bullet space. You kind of get knocked backwards there. Uh, it is going to do some damage to you guys as well. And that is going to be this much plus eight. Halved for a successful save. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> so 17 plus 21. 17. It's a lot of damage. This creature is huge and dangerous. Um, yeah, yeah, I'll post it so you can check it out. Ouch. That's a bullet. Yeah, so maybe the old guy doesn't look so crazy now as uh, um, I think it's going to pretty much knock a lass out in one go. Is it? Because he failed uh, his we can save. So you barbecue. He's You're muted, I think. Full damage. Does he have enough hit points to take it? 34? You need to have 34 health. 34? Oh, it's both falls. Oh. 3d6 oh, no. plus 4 and 3d6 plus 4. Uh, it slams it to the ground and lashes out, spinning serrated armor, slashing as this creature is a beast to be feared. Um, e. That is its turn. That's an action it takes instead of attacking with its bite. So that'll bring us to Pino. Um, well, that changes my actions. So I think um, it's still, it should still have disadvantage. Uh, does it have a... Oh, no, before the end of his next turn, never mind. Carry on. Yes. Vicious Mark. Um, might be a save. <laughs> oh, um. Sorry, sorry one more thing. Hell, Damien, yeah. you're taking half damage from that, hey? Yeah, it's still 15 points of damage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I will walk. Oh, I don't know how close I want to get to him. I'll just walk behind this fence right here. And I'll do what I can. I'll um, cast another vicious mockery, hoping he doesn't do another jumping leap and kills everyone. Okay. You can hear in the background the old man. Uh, quickly, this way. <laughs> um. So he needs a uh, wisdom. Oh, I thought I rolled it. I don't know. Natural 20. Oh. Oh, I don't know why. I think he got Delhi. it. She comes out of the suit. Ha ha. <laughs> Alright. Alright. And I will, as a bonus action, give um, Fury uh, my last bardic inspiration. Hoping he won't die. Very well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that brings us to Avant. So shit went south real quick. And what you're doing? Yeah, at this point I'm like, are we going to try and kill this thing or are we going to just try and get out of here? Um, should we try and fight or do you yeah. to run? Run! <laughs> I mean, I I walked up so I can help uh, Alas, but I would well, run. Well, is down. Straight up down. Uh, Alas, Was I uh, close enough to get hit by the shockwave? Nope. No. No. He got confused. It's a, it's a loss. Oh. I lost it down. He's down. Mm. I mean, <clears throat> if I can do anything, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think I'm. I think I've actually made a mistake here. Just one yeah. second. It uses its action 
to land in a space that contains one or more other creatures. So it's got to actually land in your space, mm. which I can't do for both of you. I misunderstood how that worked. Uh, so I'm just going to roll a d4. Uh, on a 1 or a 2, it went for Fury. On a 3 or 4, it went for Alas. That sounds pretty fair. That's kind of weird wording, though, because how would one or more p creatures be in a single creature's space? Because it's I a guess. large creature. It's a large creature. It's an over. It's an what was in third edition called an overbel overwhelming attack or overbearing yeah. attack. So you where you this trample person. a person. Yeah, knocks them out. So okay, so yeah, if they're like next to each other, I suppose, then it could be in two people's spaces. So it could be landed, four. Uh, uh, struck hmm. straight on a lass, and he would have gone five feet backwards, and then Fury, you will not take damage from that, thankfully, according to the wording here. <laughs> He doesn't jump next round. Uh, well, it needs to jump 15 feet as part of its movement, so uh, it won't be able to jump on you guys. Now, Devant, you moving up? Oh yeah, I'm gonna move to <clears throat> last, and use my action to grab him and move him out of the range. So I'll just drag him out. You are ready, uh, blade singing, hey? Yeah. Okay. Yuck, dragging him away from this creature. Uh, let's see here. Would that be an attack opportunity? Uh, it's forced force movement. It should be. Movement, technically. Very well. Uh, then how far can you get back with him with your half movement? Uh, let's see. It's about over here, right? Fifteen at forty feet, so So about here would you be able to do max? Yeah. Okay, nice, just trying to get your friend out of there, pulling it uh, pulling on his slowly gooifying body. It's kind of now that he's unconscious, it's losing his form slowly. Um, so it makes it awkward, but uh, Fury. Ooh. This is not looking pretty. Um, well, well, it looks like we're backing up at the very least. So two. I'm going to take a swing here with a booming blade. Okay. 19. Four damage plus booming blade. Where's the booming blade damage? That's oh, there's no damage extra. And it did an attack of opportunity. Okay. It will definitely take this one. It's gonna try and bite you. <laughs> He's miss. Miss. Twenty will miss. Yep. You have twenty one at the moment. Yep. With the uh, uh, shield of faith. Good job. Yeah, they try. you just see these like granite jaws <laughs> slam down, uh, easily capable of kind of cutting a person in half. Okay, that's all I can do this round, though. Okay. Uh, Koza, that'll bring us to you, Nablina, sorry. Yeah, she... It's relieved that, uh, Alas is getting out of the fray, slowly. Uh, she yawns and gets sort of overwhelmed by her other half, and she's going to take the form of Dren as a bonus action. Nice. Uh, and then she will uh, cast, let's see, uh, Eldritch Blast over at the thing. <laughs> Pretty heavily armored. Ooh. Oh no. Yeah. Uh, kind of as you try to shoot it, uh, the movement kind of scares up a couple of birds that were hiding in the reeds, and one just like poof, turns into feathers. <laughs> uh, well, she's going to try and get back over towards the, the cart. Yeah, Lady Dre is kind of wheel spinning the horses uh, and just kind of kicking it into the distance. 
Um, you would still be able to get on. I will say for now that'll bring us to a last death save. Death save from you, please, sir. Is he here? Oh, you muted this whole time, Alas. I'm. I've been trying to tell her. Oops. Uh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, do you want a private or not? But eh. Oh no, it's all good. 20. Uh, Uncle Polder will head to here, kind of getting to his uh, cart, and you see kind of rummages around, moving up to this side, kind of pulls out something from uh, the cart itself, holding it in his hands. Um, sounds like he begins to sing the Song of Awakening. You're not really sure. Uh, the bullet is kind of rampaging. Uh, it is feels its prey getting away from it with its uh, burrowing uh, tremor sense as you see it kind of leap uh, slightly up in the air landing here and burrowing into the ground and you kind of lose sight of it you feel it's like did it take the damage uh, it moved <laughs> so it would take damage if there was damage I eat. <laughs> yeah, one point of thunder damage Feel the kind of, uh, you can see the, the crops getting disrupted and thrown into the air as creature burrows under the ground. Uh, there's no attack that comes as of yet, uh, but you can kind of flinching, feeling the iron jaws approaching swiftly. Pino. Um, Pino will walk up to Alas, give him a little whistle like, come up, go out, get up. I'll give him a cure wounds. Um. Yeah. Oh, damn. Nice. Very nice. And... I had a terrible dream that I got squashed by a giant rage, a rampaging monster. Please tell me that was a dream. It wasn't a dream. Run! And I'll take another but... step here. I think I have an... A... Oh, actually, I can take another step. So, yeah. And I'll go here. Okay. Uh, Avant. As you kind of look in the distance, you can see Uncle Polder standing there, this kind of strange, scrawny man. Uh, he's like chanting over something in his hands, and you can see a bit of a glow begin to, uh, almost as if the morning sun has kind of fallen on his shoulders. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so I know he's casting something, but for now I just move closer while clearing a lass. I'm trying to get him further away from that thing since he's hurt, and I'll cast Blur on myself. Very nice. That'll bring us to Fury feel the beast is somewhere like below your feet yeah probably should move it out so you don't jump on us all again like that so one one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay I'm done. Yeah, she'll just prepare an Eldritch Blast for whenever the bullet surfaces again. I'll ask for, we'll, well, thank you, Avant. That is very kind of you, but I'm going to be moving to here. Sorry. I'm still within 30 feet of me. Yes. And I'm going to second wind myself. Nice. Which is a D10, I'm pretty sure. Yep. A D10 plus my firewall. Polder, uh, you can see he's kind of still chanting, and you do hear the words uh, Cetos. Seems that he is kind of reaching out to one of the Covenant gods. Um, he's going to spend his entire turn doing that effectively. Uh, the bullet is going to not be too happy about the situation here. Kill Pino. Kill Pino. <laughs> I mean, if you're that keen. <laughs> nah. Uh, it's 
gonna kind of just <laughs> erupt from the ground like a sandworm uh, from June. Uh, looking around at the two figures there. Uh, let's see, it has got a quite a choice of tasty morsels here. Uh, one or two is a bond. We'll attack Pino. See a Eldritch Blast just kind of poof off its armor and not manage to uh, find the right place to strike. And uh, just going to make a bite attack against you here. Yeah, that hits. Oh. Yeah, that's. I'm still rebarbing it. Okay. Yeah, that's good. It's going to roll again. Should. 18. Yeah, that Dark. hits. That still hits. Okay. Uh, oh. Well. Oh, that's different that's damage, though. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. okay. Wow. Um, nice save. <laughs> So you kind of Jeez. feel like you almost, you, you, it's hard for me to say this because I'm trying to imagine what a Kenku body is like, which I'm not familiar with, but you probably lose a copious amount of feathers and even a bit of skin. You can kind of feel like blood coming from a large wound as, as almost like these steel guillotine jaws just clamp shut and just cleanly cut away. It's not like a tear, it's just like a cut. Um, I'm just wondering, is that within third? Um, is that creature within thirty feet of me, or is it thirty-five? I'm not sure. Five feet off, man. Is what it looks like. Yeah. It's a bit hard to see what it's like, large. Oh. Pino, that's you, man. What's your yeah. Um. I take the disc engage action. Go here. You do see that this uh, Lady Dre represents her wagon as well, and that's like rampaging up the road. So you oh. can try and like stick your hands out and grab onto the sides if you wish. Yeah, I'll probably try to do that and like try with one hand try to get up and with the other hand flip that <laughs> flip off. And Fair um, yeah, I think um, I just start crying. No, that no, I just end my turn there. <laughs> Okay, so that'll bring us to Avant. <laughs> All right, seeing as he's out of there, I'm gonna uh, dash. Fair enough. Yeah, more than enough to catch up with everyone else. Here we go. Oh, for fuck's sake. We were heading over here, right? Correct, yeah. All right, that's it for me. Okay, Fury, you uh, are kind of ready in the safe area. Anything else from you? Yeah, I'm going to take a shot. It's a like crossbow. And take... Crossbow. 13. Bounces off. Okay, I retreat. Anything else from you, Nabina, as the horses continue to careen? You'd get to... So you just kind of ramp off onto the verge here and start to kind of curl to the north trying to avoid trees and you're getting thrown around in the back of the van. Now the Aldrich Blast, but to no avail, this creature is just like an armored tank rolling through the hills. Uh, it sees... Okay, well that, that'll, first, that'll bring us to Alas first of all. You and all the closest. Um, I last will move back here. All right. Just check one thing. Uh, Uncle Polder is just kind of. He's almost gone into like a strange catatonic state. Uh, you can hear him whispering under his breath, muttering. Uh, this light that's kind of fallen upon his shoulders uh, does kind of suffuse the air around him. And as we get to the bullet's turn, it just screams in anger, and uh, it's going to use this action to dash. Uh, as it leaps over the rocks, kind of onto the road, just ground splintering as it lands, uh, it roars this horrible alien cry into the air, and it's going to use this action to dash and leap. And as it does, it kind of hits uh, this wall of force here, and gets slammed into the ground, crying out in anger, surprise, and frustration as it stands up, Kind of scratching against it, and as it every time it does, you kind of see uh, almost uh, invisible 
wall of force that just uh, you can see the kind of slightest sheen as the creature strikes against it um, you can see Uncle Paul kind of flinch every time uh, this happens but keeps kind of muttering under his breath a uh, creature kind of steps back looks around and gives it one more charge and kind of starts to meander around not really sure on how to reach you guys Poor, I convince him to leave anyways with some crossbow shot if he doesn't doesn't take off. Oh, well, Unc uh, do, do not stop. You can hear his voice is pained. Um, the creature should not be harmed. It is just of the land. And uh, you can see it's kind of draining a lot of his energy doing this. You're not really sure how. He's got some kind of religious focus in his hand. Um, with the bullet kind of does start to wander off eventually after a minute or two of kind of tense scratching and sniffing around. <laughs> well, okay, well, he's of the that land, fuck the land. <laughs> eventually kind of moving back over the fields and giving one last look back in your direction uh, and then just <laughs> burrowing into the ground out of sight once more. Uh, Uncle Paul kind of falls to his knees. Ah, ah. Looking around, uh, is everyone all right? <laughs> oh, I'm just peachy now, aren't I? Uh, care to explain what the fuck that was about? The protection of Cetos offers us some benefits. Uh, help me up, please, dear. Kind of hand, hanging on a vant as he struggles to his legs. Uh, yeah, I go and help him on. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be right back. That's fine. Uh, we're gonna take a halfway break here anyway. He's just gonna point up to the the hillside house. Uh, let's have some tea and discuss. Uh, I'll tell you what you need to know at the very least. I could do with a bit of a sit. That'd be much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna lead you up to a farmhouse on the hillside, not too far away. And here we'll. I'll see you guys in five ten minutes. We'll take a break here. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as you kind of, uh, in a hurried state, move up the hill to uh, quite a decent-sized farmhouse, uh, you can see a young man at the door with quite, um, similar to Lady Dre, quite bombastic colouring and uh, dress style. Um, Uncle, wh wh what's the problem? As uh, Polder moves up, you idiot! What were you doing? Didn't you hear that creature out there? I almost died if it wasn't for these, th thankfully for these folks, coming along at the right time. I had to activate the wards together. And you can see he's just kind of, uh, 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 I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't realize. Uh, but, but thank you, everybody, please, come inside. Um, he's kind of nervously trying to, uh, can I get you some tea? Uh, yes, get me some tea. As uh, I'm definitely not impressed. Uh, I've actually got a handout from what this other figure looks like. Uh, but he turns to the group. Please, everyone, uh, come inside and let, allow me to introduce myself properly. Uh, I am uh, Uncle Polder, as uh, what everyone calls me. And this is my nephew, uh, Tungsten. Um, who's busy kind of like clanging around in the kitchen, getting cups and plates ready. Um, and well, I'd say it's yes. a pleasure, but... Situation kind of differs. Yes, I haven't seen, haven't been attacked by a bullet in <coughs> a couple of months now, but they are always a worry. Uh, thankfully, the thankfully the wards worked. I was only about fifty percent sure. <coughs> well, that's concerning. Very. Uh, but uh, Lady Dre and you as well. As she smiles, and um, I, I'm just going to be turning to my horses. Uh, but she kind of nods her head and just dips out again. Oh, well, uh, please, everyone uh, here. He takes a, a cup of tea from uh, Tungsten. Uh, what are you all doing in, in this area? You're traveling quite early in the morning. Well, uh, we're investigating. There was some 
trouble at a farm? Well, not so much trouble at the farm, but trouble at the festival that might be coming from a farm. That's tr definitely bad to hear. Um, I mean, there's been no troubles at my farm worse than uh, and I can remember this season. Uh, my pact, at least. Uh, people around you tend to gather together. Uh, there's a couple of close farms. Uh, he points out a window, and now that the sun is kind of rising up, you can see a couple of dotted buildings not too far from his own. Uh, not as big as his, but... Um, can't be from here. We're doing pretty well this season. So, uh... Have you heard of any anything strange going down recently? Any missed people? Any strange behavior of sorts? Any new individuals in the area? That works as well. Well, um, people are embracing the life in the rattle. I, it has its dangers, but it it comes with open land and uh, prosperity in other senses, of course. Uh, there's, there's a couple of pacts that have established themselves recently in the last couple of months. Uh, one, I believe, even about a couple of weeks ago, not too far from here. This uh, group of four farmers went into, all, well, for lack of a better word, slightly insane. Um, have you had that happen to anybody? Insane. Um, I know. This, this is bad news. Uh, all we've had to deal out here in the rattle is just defending ourselves from the wild creatures. Um, kind of definitely looks worried at this. Um, do you mention at all? Uh, may I ask, uh, is there a name of, of you looking for? Is there a name of a pact or a person? I, I would maybe help you a bit better. Well, he'll give over the um, names of the four people that went insane. So, he, well, those four were the ones that were acting all weird, but were going to visit where the farm they're from, and also uh, a child or well, a person named Kiana. Kiana Cully. Yes. Uh, well, Cully was the name of the, the friend who passed. Uh, but Kiana, oh. <coughs> I've, I, I have actually met Kiana, uh, Kiana, and I know these others of uh, which you speak as well. Yes, they're, they are one of the more newly set up uh, uh, packs, not part of our own. Um, not too far from here, but uh, people usually stay quite close to home in these uh, regions. Um, so we don't often interact, but things for a moment. We did help them set up early in the season. Um, I, I tend to keep an eye out for uh, people who might not be a good fit for the light sh life here in the uh, the rattle. It's definitely not for everyone. Uh, Kiana seemed to have things on her mind other than farming. Um, but and the others? They seem like the sort that would succeed here? The others seemed a bit more accepting. For what I can say, uh, what I, from what I could see, um, they did visit again a couple of weeks ago. Uh, they came trading for tools, I believe. Um, she seemed to be uh, em embracing her life, though, the second time I saw her. Uh, a big change. She spoke of uh, how happy uh, she was. Uh, said uh, someone named uh, Kali was coming to join her soon. Um, it's just always uh, better to I'm have family sorry. and friends out there. Uh, it can get extremely lonely, uh, you understand. Did you say Curly? He nods. See you, oh, oh, wow. Did I, you I, see I that person at all? I think that was it. Uh, no, I, I believe she was speaking about someone traveling from Promise or one of the other towns. Well, that's gotten a lot more concerned a lot quicker. Um, Why is that? Curly's dead, remember? Oh, yeah. Oh, we didn't kill anybody at the... I just knocked him No. <laughs> Kelly died when they were a child. Oh, to their really? 
I'm sorry, I wasn't really listening. I, I don't know what <laughs> that is, but good job, Evelina. You, you truly are a master of investigation. Um, but first and foremost, have you heard of anything coming down that way? Seen anything strange? Any lights? Any large events happening? No, it's just been business as usual. It's uh, nearing the end of the season, harvest is coming in, so we're all very busy. We have our hands full here. Well, there was words you just used. Uh, is there any way to port uh, make them portable? Have some sort of defense against bullets on the road? I'm, I'm afraid not. It is the last line of uh, defense to houses that are more well established here and kind of points around to all the various religious uh, symbols around the house um, I had one of the proclaimers come out uh, to bless the place so those bullets I think you called them um, how can we avoid them? you know how we can avoid them? as a Good question. Um, just think, see here. Do you know the exact location of the farm that we're supposed to be going towards? Yes, he can give you. He can give you directions, and in the daylight, it's not going to be hard to find it. It's going to be. How close is it? Um, a fair couple of hours, three to four hours, uh, at like a steady pace. Oh. Okay. You all wanna, uh, if you'd all like to have a rest here, you're welcome to do so. Uh, the bullets, um, they are extremely dangerous, don't get me wrong, but they are few and far between. As I said, it's the first time I've seen one in ages. If you feel the tremors uh, coming on, I mean, I suggest maybe trying to find uh, rocky ground, um, or if you have points to you know, the horses foraging on the grass in the distance through the open door, if you have animals that can outrun them, possibly. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to fight them, of course. Um, we learned that quite quickly just before. Yes, I, I'm glad none of you... I'm surprised none of you perished, to be honest. Uh, I've seen many a friend go before you can even react to the creature's jaws. But, well, the luck seems to be on our side this time. Last time it bit a cow clean in half. Uh, um, Tungsten, these people, uh, I want you to show them to Kiana's farmhouse. He's got a, but, but, uh, but uh, no, no buts or anything. Uh, you could do some good to get out of here, and after this morning, I, mean, I could do some good to have a bit of peace and quiet. Some. Well. I believe the true question is, do they have defenses up, or is there any place close to that house that we could go to in case of emergency? I, I don't think so, no. Um, you're quite on your own out here. Well, let's, let's hope we don't run into anything too bad out there. We'll keep your kid on the, uh, on the cart itself. That way they can at least get a, you know, be ready to make a quick exit. That's fine. I know the, I'm pretty confident. I know the land and, uh, I mean, I am studying to become a proclaimer after all. I've only got a couple tests left and then I'll be adding to the song of awakening myself. Well, that sounds grand. Uh, is everybody all good to continue down to that house, or... Because I'm good to go. Just check it on all of yous. Give you, yeah, I'm give you each a kind of a small really? grass charm uh, representing uh, Cetos. Uh, just a sign of good luck. Uh, sorry, Niblina. Oh, she's going to be taking at least a short rest if not a long rest if no one stops her because we haven't slept in the whole day and night <laughs> yep. yeah Pina will 
take your lead for once and be like, like i like your idea yeah, she's just like probably have fallen asleep on somebody well yeah. they can always kind of just uh kind of scoop you and put you in the caravan and keep going it'll probably be easy enough to get at least a short rest um and you guys are all kind of feeling the fatigue it is definitely setting in after the adrenaline rush wears off of the bullet you realize how drained your bodies actually are uh lady dre probably the most rested amongst you uh has finished kind of uh, tending to the horses patting them down calming them after that event uh, and is ready to head out again tungsten wards grabbed his stick uh his wrapped his scarf a couple of times around and is ready to set out as well. So, I'll um, see. Well, let's set off. Yep. We can rest on the way. Well, uh, Tungsten will climb up next to Lady Dre, kind of help with directions, although she mostly knows the way, and he's a keen eye to at least try and help keep watch, uh, who isn't so tired. The rest of you passing out in the back, kind of just in a heap. Uh, or trying to stoically stay awake uh, even though the fatigue is really pulling at your eyes you begin further travel into the hills uh, the land slowly begins to um, almost imperceptibly rise and you can see in the distance the vast mountains uh, that are kind of climbing into the, the uh, into the clouds kind of cutting a swath through them as uh, the wind carries them uh, north uh, into further lands deeper into into God's breath, uh, then you are going to travel. Uh, let's just get my page here. Uh, the hours pass by, so we get to about three and a half, about three hours, fifteen minutes, just over the three-hour mark. Uh, the <coughs> the travel has been fairly bumpy, as there's not very well kept paths here, but. Uh, for the most part, it's been enough that you could nod off, and some of you have definitely taken a short rest by the time this happens. Uh, you hear there's this kind of concerned talking between the two figures in the front, and uh, Lady Dre, uh, you all might want to uh, wake up. Uh, we've got something coming up here. It doesn't look right. As What's going on? As you yeah, guys can like, roll hit dice. Yeah. yeah, you guys can roll hit dice if you want, and you can get the resources a short rest would grant you uh, for now. It's a very temporary patch on a wound, but uh, you could probably push out a couple of hours more at most. Um, you're soon going to have to roll one more time for exhaustion, but not yet. So the open fields have all but vanished behind sparse woods at the far edge of the rattle. The air here starts to smell stagnant and carries the taste of metal. Uh, through the trees, multiple small uh, farmhouses hunch amid a patch of green fields. Um, now, what you see up ahead is... Uh, the building's door stands open for those of you uh, who have the keenest sight. There's definitely something wrong about the atmosphere here. It's sort of bad. The mysterious energy, is it? Sorry? Is it mysterious and you said it's different? Something There's something wrong about, about the, the house. It's like uh, it's it's supposed it's Un it it's very unoccupied. It looks like it's been left in a hurry. And now that you get closer, the one thing that does stick out, uh, that you kind of, as you round uh, a last bit of foliage that blocked it from sight, there's a large red X painted on the front of the house next to the open door. I think that's a sign, guys. Oh, that is... That is ominous. That is... Uh, sinister. Yeah, I would say that. I don't... what? It just means that it... It might actually be blessed. We don't know if it's sinister. We don't know the I'm nature saying, from of it at all. Yeah, when I say sinister, it's just the first blush impression. 
But it does look pretty sinister. Yeah. Lena thinks it's... It could be anything. She's not so haunted. Uh, well... Flynn. Or not. Oh, it's terrible. Well, I guess it can't hurt to knock. Of course. Well, it we can in knock. so many ways. Yeah, it can. I can invite yeah, it. I, 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 I heard it after I said it. Trust me, I heard it after I said it. <laughs> so as you kind uh -oh. of... Still, the horses carry on, and uh, Lady Dre eventually kind of pulls them to a stop at the closest point the path comes to the house. Uh, you're about how far you are away in the picture. I'm not exactly sure, probably about 80 to 100 feet away. Uh, and you can see the surrounding fields are overgrown. The plants seem to be um, untended, rotting in some cases, and crows flitting between perches on the uh, fences. No signs of people, kind of one takes to the air as you approach. Ah, ah, just like flying. Can you tell if a, yeah. can you tell if a bull that has crossed underground, does it leave like a trail of destruction? If it travels close to the surface, it definitely would. Uh, but you don't okay. see any, like, huge holes. I mean, if the bullet had to affect the house or anyone around, there'd be signs showing that. Hmm. So, yeah, none of that's around, okay. <laughs> and you can see that this is uh, the pact that Uncle Polder told you about, this group of uh, farmers working together to make a better life and to sustain each other. And you can see adjacent farms, uh, probably about, uh, they say here, an eighth of a mile apart from each other. You can see multiple farmhouses now. Uh, this is the closest one you've come to. Should we check it? Well, we're going to have to check it out, but I think we need to check out the other farmhouses after. See if any others are like this. <laughs> but this one's a good one to start with. Is the door open? All right. Uh, Neblina walks forward, uh, and you see her reach out her hand to run it along the red X. Uh, as you look to the side, I mean, first of all, your hand comes away dry. It comes away with the residue. Uh, your fingers are stained a bit, um, coppery orange. Uh, you realize this is some kind of crimson mud. Red clay. Ah. That's the same that we found uh, in Promise? Or like similar? Similar, yes, yes, yes. And you can see that uh, in the house, as you're kind of standing pretty close, the door hangs open. There's clothing and belongings that have been kind of strewn around everywhere. Uh, they are all covered in the similar crimson mud. Uh, she'll look at the rest of the group and just say, this, this came from Promise. This wasn't here. The ground, I believe, here was not of red clay. It was like a different type of ground? Um, not necessarily. Uh, it is quite weird that they have to use crimson clay here, but you have seen <laughs> a bit of the land around here might give that coloration. Hmm. Alright. <laughs> Never mind then. She's just uh, touching random uh, lifts and thinking if they're maybe magical or something. Drawing conclusions that maybe aren't there. <laughs> Fair enough. Whichever one last sees Niplina touching thing, mm, is this magical? He avoids, like walks around it. Walk around the whole place then. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, are you stopping to investigate this first house? You can see multiple kind of scattered on the hillside around you. I think we are. Anybody else? I'm good with it. I think Bino is just staying back. He had a pretty dramatic, traumatic experience. Sure. Just tired. Give me a perception investigation check. <coughs> that hat don't have disadvantage yet because I did not fail that con save. Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. Everyone else has disadvantage. Uh, so... Um, I will. Um, use my, um, I have, well, look for it, I can't recall, so I won't have disadvantage at least. Alright, fair enough. So, nice. flat up. So we begin to look through the farmhouse. Now, they're, they're pretty utilitarian, um, a few rooms for sleeping, a small kitchen. Uh, you don't come across any creatures, uh, the accumulation of 
dust here makes it um, makes it pretty clear that no one's disturbed the rooms for uh, for some time. Now it is a bit of a dusty area, so it's hard to put an exact date on this. But as you kind of look around the first and find nothing uh, of interest or importance, you start to head down the road to the next one, and you can see in a similar fashion it bears. Uh, another red X. This time you come across uh, human bones that look to have been freshly gnawed by uh, some kind of creature. The These bones litter the floors of uh, one of the main rooms in this house. So it's hard to kind of tell what animal. It looks like definitely predatory of course. Um, quite large I would Im you would imagine. As you kind of go... Bigger than a human or <coughs> smaller than a human? Um, like, would we be able to sell at least that? close in size. You can give me a, a survival check. Or medicine, maybe. Would be appropriate. Oh, nice. <coughs> uh, yeah, so you recognize the teeth, the teeth mark as coyote. Uh, much larger, though, indicating a, a giant variant, most likely. And, and you've heard of them being spoken about out here. On well, the bright side, it wasn't a human eating this. It was just a giant coyote. Um, but coyotes are normally scavengers. They don't tend to enjoy getting into fights. Correct. So, they might have already been dead before they went so, uh, back yet what killed them. <laughs> As your um, your investigations continue, you eventually come to a single house, which is kind of like, uh, kind of in the center-ish uh, of all the houses. You can see in the distance, uh, the others are kind of close enough to see it. Now the red X, red X, but there's one house that does not have uh, this crimson X on it. Well, we find where we're going next. God, hope it's not cannibals. Please, to God, please not the cannibals. As you know, I would prefer cannibals over wizards. Please be a cannibal. Really? That's yeah, because point. Well, I find cannibals a lot more agreeable than wizards. He says that around all the mage crops. <laughs> Do you want to be eaten? Well, I don't think they'll eat me. No longer. Humanoid. I mean, seems unless it's a cannibal mean. slime. Well, oh. thank you, I guess. Thank you. Uh, I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> Does that mean if you eat pudding, are you cannibalizing? Well, that's like self for a second. Uh, I'm gonna go with no. I, I don't think it is. If it is, I am a, a cannibal, man. I do enjoy good pudding. Tally chew. Maybe it's just another animal eating another apple. I think? I suppose so. Asking the real, real hard questions. <laughs> I realized that I went and I found a nice <laughs> color version. I don't know why they're so into giving us these black and white maps recently. It's definitely picked up. They're super cheap. It really sucks. Yeah, it's yeah, like, right? <laughs> all this money, and it's like, really? You couldn't put this even in color? This is like one DM that's like, oh, hey, I just yeah. did all these maps in color. Here you guys go. I read it. Okay, like, okay, let's <laughs> Yeah. You can you can give this map to your kid to just like color it with his crane or something. <laughs> even worse is that the battle maps they don't even include battle maps for a lot of the newer modules. It's just here's a blank parchment paper. Yep. Theater of the mind, guys. <laughs> like, really? Deal with it. Like paying money for this and really this is what they give you. Okay. Nice. Uh, uh, I'm trying not to look at anything. I'm not looking. Why is it doing this? Son of a bitch. Hold on. Excuse me, I'll let you know my mother's a lovely person. <laughs> it was I think he was not talking to you. 
to like really <laughs> briefly um i think the farmhouse yeah. and then it flickered away i was i, I was trying my best to look at anything did we see anything you're gonna get I overwhelmed succeeded. your esp show us if we're gonna get overwhelmed <laughs> uh i saw us all dying horrifically by drop yeah they just threw one in this uh farmhouse just to kill it all oh. We all die. There's two Tarasks and a dragon in there, an ancient gold dragon. Yeah. Rocks fall. Well, new characters. <laughs> oh, I'm scared to put you guys back on there now. Oh, nope. I don't see anything. I'm just going <laughs> to use this one for now. Okay, so here you guys are. <laughs> uh, I don't know what's happening with that one. <clears throat> I just tried to copy it over from my other game, I didn't re-upload it, I transmogged it, that's why, so it's giving me issues, even though I've reset the discoverable darkness. So you find yourself approaching this uh, particular farmhouse, uh, the large one that appears abandoned, like the smaller houses around it, but no X marks uh, the door. Farming implements do lie abandoned in the mud, and wild plants have kind of grown up to the houses, uh, faded wooden porch, the crops here, around the field appear a sickly somewhat you the, here what do you call it in the over, overgrown yard yes the tools look like they were put down in a uh, carefully or did it look like they were dropped in a fight uh i mean they looked like they were kind of just dropped where they where they were as far as okay you, you do see that the house's that yard all... is it's got this a lot of the muddy red clay around it here yeah mm. I was going to say, so it's not on like the edge of the field, it's like right in the middle, they just dropped them. Correct. Okay. Well, I think we've reached a place in the process of getting eradicated by whatever's drawing those exes. Let's just hope it's nothing too dangerous. It's always is. You can it's always see. is, yeah. Uh, Ward moves out into the field and um, this is not right. These crops look pretty bad. I've never seen this. Uh, he starts to kind of look around and you see he takes out a book and starts to document uh, what's going on here. Focus up, kid. Uh, this could be very dangerous. I would recommend being ready to run. Do the crops actually look like? Like, are they super withered or just yep. like the wrong crops or something? Uh, if you'd like to fully discern, you could give me a nature or perception check. <clears throat> In a wheat field, when it's starting to go awry, you start seeing something called wheat rust start to form, which are other types of plants that kind of invade the field. So, I mean, it definitely looks like the plants are uh, suffering, kind of wilting somewhat. There's discoloration to a lot of the leaves as well. Um, uh, it's like they're getting sick. This is... Yeah. Does anybody have any farming experience other than the kid? Exactly. 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 Actually, I'm flat. <laughs> I grew up on a, a farm, a plantation, uh, places where people grow the crops, such as this. Okay, then. Um, do you know what could be causing this? Is it just neglect or is it something else? If the weather has not changed, I don't know what uh, crops these are. The plants are not familiar to me, but if they are low maintenance, then something else perhaps is affecting them. But let's hope this is just a bunch of people that don't know how to farm properly. No. Look, look at these, pointing to the dropped uh, tools. They were, they were probably taken away. Maybe they were eaten by that thing from earlier. 
but they Jack Coyote. Hurry. Huh? It's probably not the Jack Coyote. Maybe, I think that it ate maybe them. not. But whatever it was, they didn't want to leave the place. They it seemed like they were forced, maybe, or scared. Hmm. Well then, to be safe inside, see if any of them are still here. Any of them are still alive. Yeah, let's check it out. Yeah, check them out. I mean, definitely investigate the uh, actual. Lady Dre says she will uh, keep a watch here from her ca caravan and call you if there's any dangers. What does she use to defend herself if there is? I mean, is she just relying on us? Does she have a weapon? She has a sword short, which she knows how to use. Okay. Tungsten's also got a weapon. I mean, pretty much you see everyone who's out here in the rattle carries some kind of weapon. Okay. Uh, can you give us some sort of signal if everything goes to shit out here? Uh, yeah, yeah it'll, it'll be some kind of scream for help. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be a that works for me. It works for me. Um, it works for me. Well then, let's hope that everybody's all right. Well, so as for this farmhouse in front of you now, you do see kind of uh, this large porch that goes around. Uh, it is mostly, I mean, you see a couple of entrances that are closed. Uh, there's this large kind of shuttered windows and a door on each side as well. <clears throat> well, then, uh, which door do you want to go through? The one on this side or the one on the other? Yeah, I mean, we can just go through this one. I, I'll All keep right, eyes on the windows, guys. Don't worry. Well, thank you, Cat Lupino. You know, you're the hero we don't deserve. I agree. First two things I heard, I heard today. <laughs> well, inside you well, can see uh, a long hallway uh, that kind of has multiple doors leading off uh, to the various rooms of the house. Uh, the room itself kind of dusty. A couple of moats have. Uh, being kicked up by you opening the door and kind of uh, swirl around in the shafts of light that make it inside here. For the most part, it's quite still. Hello? Yeah. The is there anybody? The uh, there is no response Neblina. from what you say. What did you say, Neblina? Sorry. <laughs> She's just knocking on the door as Alas is calling out, uh, you know, if anyone's there. She's at least trying to be polite, even if it is an empty house. You never know. Yeah, glass is already inside. <laughs> Gosh, Alas, your manners. So you do hear a, <laughs> like a <laughs> from further into the house. It was like someone bumping against a table or something like that. And then the silence again. From the left or from the right? Uh, coming from the north side of the house. Okay. Definitely go check that out quickly. Oh, it's a big house. Last one. Oh, it... Kick open the door. Yeah. Which door? Uh, the, no the one you're in front of, the Fury? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this opens up into a kitchen. Uh, the room has been torn apart, pots and pans scattered everywhere, rotten food streaks the floorboards, and you can see four people standing almost uh, kind of like like drifting left and right as they kind of sway from side to side uh, they don't seem aware of your presence really but you can see from this side as this they kind of just blandly stare they are looking towards uh, each other so uh, the two on the left are kind of facing the two on the right you can see their eyes are crimson filled with this blood red oh this will make it easy start knocking them out I would recommend we don't touch it. Well, better to knock him out now than have to kill him later. Somebody that controls these people were to show up. Perhaps, but it might also trigger them to attack us. Well, these guys look easy. 
perhaps if we just tie them up instead. Well, okay. Tie them up, knock them out. I just figured knocking them out would be safer for us. That would be, but if it snaps them out of it, or if we manage to snap them out of it, I'd prefer them to be awake and not have to, you know, you waste resources to get them back up and run. You can see that each one they are armed. They all have a sharp knife or some kind of farming implement. Yeah, that's what I was figuring. These guys are guards on command. Well then, what is command of them? Whatever it is, it's not here right now. So that's why we should disable them now before whatever it is or he or she or whatever comes back. I can't believe I'm agreeing with you, but I suppose you're right. Okay. So we make short work of these guys. Do they resist our persuasion attempts? <laughs> Are you attacking them or just restraining them? We're going to try and restrain them first. If they start resisting, then. So you mean taking out. Them. Are you saying like taking out rope and beginning to restrain them? Yeah. Yeah. They do not react to that. Okay. Disarm them and tie them up and package them away somewhere safely. Well, I think they're safe in here, to be honest. Oh, I meant like underneath the bed or pressed up against something. Captured, you know, so they can't just wiggle free. Well, let's put them against the wall and use the table. Okay. I pin them down with something heavy. I'm going to like... Try to slap him and see if I can like knock him awake after we put him in the corner with the table on them. You, as soon as you slap the this figure, the eyes kind of shift towards you. All of the eyes in unison move towards you, and this creature starts to <laughs> pull at the bandage, uh, the restraints, trying to get at you, uh, trying to just scrape with the hands. It can't get close enough. Well, that is disconcerting to a major. Let's close this door and investigate the rest of the house. What do you say? Okay, sure. There are two other doors inside. Oh, we searched yeah. the room too, real quick. See if there's anything in the room. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's been it's destroyed. You could probably get pots and pans, but I imagine that's not really what you're looking for. Uh, for the most part, it's kind of just food stains and rotted uh, reserves. These people seem like wizard at all. A while or just a few days since it's been active, please. They seem slightly gone, but not not as if they've kind of been without for weeks. Okay. Definitely kick open this door over here. I also can't see anything inside. Oh, <laughs> just... let me sort you out there. Uh, make sure to update your token. Sorry about that. I think Pino will start to walk up hearing... Yeah. But there's no quiz stuff. Well, we found some foam heads, you know, they're a bit... Well, they're just the same as people that attacked the foam village. Oh, down. Lovely. Because we need more people, wow. more like them. So, a long uh, plain table, wooden sideboard, several chairs. They lie scattered on the floor here, debris streaked with uh, crimson stains. The room looks pretty ransacked. <coughs> Uh, you can hear a slight... There's like a scritching in the corner, almost as if there's, there's like uh, insects crawling around. <coughs> I'm going to have a little sticky peek at that. See if I can see anything. Okay. You're going inside looking around? Yeah. Give me uh, a perception investigation. Exception it is. Hmm. The room here is made out of room. So, uh, it's you got an eight. It's not the best, but as you walk inside, uh, kind of can't really place where this the sound is coming from. And as you kind of turn uh, to the center of the room, uh, you see something kind of scurl uh, out of sight. And you kind of, as you bend oh, over, as, as you bend over, kind of 
lodged onto the underside of the table like dry wads of gum uh, multiple severed hands and uh, one disattaches itself and <laughs> like lashes out at you and jump scares it's going to make an attack ah! roll at advantage So let me just wow with these guys. Yeah, uh, twenty. Oh God, I knew I should have been sort of that uh, goth girl I went to school with. <laughs> ben was always weird. <laughs> it's not letting me change the layer. These tokens are. He cursed you. <laughs> okay, I'll just roll it from the DMs. GM layer. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, it's. Totally fucking up. Let me just re-roll, refresh. Oh, I had to refresh once or twice because it rolled when he just slowed all the way down, Yo, and things just you. started to stack up. Yeah, mine's just dumb. like there was like, yeah, there was like twenty rulers on screen. I think at this point, no. Lena will probably take out her wonderful little cupcake and <laughs> ask if Pina wants a, a taste or like wants it. Uh, sure. I'd rather get a bed right now, but I'll take what I can get. I'll take. I'll take the whole thing in one bite, just with my large like beak. Oh! Sure. Uh... No cupcake for you. <laughs> so you are now beholden no, onto yeah. Neblina. I need you to make a con save for me, please. No, I'm sure. just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sure. No, no, I'm making the, I'm making the <laughs> save. No, I'm doing it. I want to see what happens. Oh, that's... What happens that's is that? <laughs> yeah. So it's good. Yeah, obviously high. They rolled, uh, it rolls a 15 and a 22, so the 22 is going to hit you for three slashing as it kind of jumps out to rake across your face. And as that happens, so you're going to take three points of bludgeoning. Uh, we are going to go into a combat situation from that. Yeah. Oh my face! Ah. <laughs> uh, Pino actually ate the cupcake. You have advantage on initiative rolls. Oh, nice! Oh. I thought that was nice. I thought that was just for fun. <laughs> it's a cute, cute little cupcake. <laughs> I'm gonna eat all your cupcakes now. <laughs> You, you like drug this cupcake is like on on speed like whoa I feel really good thanks. It's made with fairy sugar. <laughs> it's fairy oh, sugar cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> this is canon. Baby. It is cocaine. I, I, it's canon that uh, Pino is on cocaine right now. Fairy dust. Mm. He you know, starts fighting the wall because he thinks that's the true enemy. <laughs> <laughs> right, so as these creatures all kind of drop from the underside of the, t of the table and start uh, lurching forward, we'll put you at about there because you've been moving around the room. Yeah. Uh, Avant, you hear this kind of cry of surprise and pain. You got anything for us? Uh, I'll just go into the room. I'm like, oh, that's a... Uh... A lot of guys. And, uh... I'll activate Blur. And they step in here. Nice. Here we go. Oh. Have a nice handout for that. Uh, <laughs> handout. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Real initiative for Pino is... 18, yeah. So you're going to be going gonna... first, technically. What you doing? Um... I think Pino will be like... Whew, that woke me up. Um, it's a moment before I cast this spell and kill everybody. Uh, no, this is perfect. Um, need a 10 foot sphere, I believe. Oh, snap. Yeah, kill all the hands. Yep, 
Okay, as everything in the room just kind of gets thrown around in a thunderous blast, you see all of the hands instantly turn to this red mist. Uh, they they have they have two HP each, so they're definitely not Good. surviving. Yeah, we'll like walk up also and be like, what's next? Who are we killing now? <laughs> <laughs> and you look to Alas and he's just been like covered with viscera as the, the creatures are all just like exploded <laughs> in the room. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, Khan. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of magic, but that was very, very useful. Um, do you have like a moist towelette or a towel of some sort? I am more gooey than usual. <laughs> more gooey than usual. Um, I'll be like, um, here you go. You can use my cloak. Oh, I'm, I'm, and I'll start. I'll open this door. I think, I think this cupcake got me excited. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, you see the angry so bombers uh, kind of writhing. They've got a table pinning them to the ground. Oh, good. Yeah, so, there was the insane ones I was talking about. Uh, Nablina, where you are, uh, let's just get your page open here. Uh, it looks to be a bedroom uh, in general. Uh, furnishings here. Uh, there's a writing desk for a single occupant, a bed. Uh, most of the space is neat and orderly, but the desk is strewn with art supplies and scraps of paper bearing fragmented images. Uh, there is a small chest against one of the walls. That's all fascinating. And she will call ah, out. There's a bed. There's paper, but yeah, she goes straight to the bed <laughs> and just lays in it if there's not somebody there. Nope. Uh, it's <laughs> freshly made, not disturbed. I love adding that at the end, like if that would change the, <laughs> the situation. If there was somebody there, <laughs> you'd still sleep there, let's be honest. Well, I was going to go off the table with the notes and have a look through. Sure. So it's <clears throat> uh, it's uh, paintings, drawings. Uh, it's you see repeating images here. There's hands, lakes, wide eyes looking up through water. The largest work shows a pair of eyes with handprints for pupils. Um, they all look in a similar to the picture found in Promise. Uh, about can you? You're an artsy folk. Can you describe? Uh, well, get glean anything from this. For me, this just looks like the paintings of a crazy person. Yeah, let me just get a look at it. I just start looking at it closely, trying to like get any sort of meaning out of it. Sure, sure. Is there a specific skill you'd like to make use of here? Mm, oh, I thought I had that. Mm, um. Do you have painter supplies? Are you proficient? I thought I had proficiency in it, but I guess not. Maybe I accidentally. Hmm. Well, anything or get performance when they get when I they. Feel pick... Like it's more insight if you're just trying to figure out the nature of a painting. <laughs> Insight's definitely like a yeah. yeah, yeah. Eh, not too good. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it's. I mean, this per person is very obviously like crying for help or at least pouring their uh, looks like their their paintings as their main emotional outlet uh, definitely shows uh, a very wounded person yeah looks like the person just this was their way of expressing their emotions they you know cry for help you know their emotional distress that is an understatement <laughs> I'm going to open up that chest to see what's in it, if there's anything else we can glean. It is unlocked, uh, and it holds work clothes, uh, from what you can see, uh, sized for a fairly slim person. Uh, there is... give me uh, an investigation check. Alrighty then, my negative one. <laughs> Pulling clothes out, uh, there's overalls, jerseys, uh, mostly just kind of working clothes. Um, nothing else that you can see. Hmm. Nothing useful in here. Oh, let's check out the rest of this building. 
Neblina, it is not time to sleep. Please get up off the bed. <laughs> you hear kind of a mumbled response. I will count the three, and then I'm pulling you off that bed. One. <laughs> two. It's happened three. Before. It did not go well. Two and a half. <laughs> two and three quarters. Deja vu. Two and seven eighths. She will just speak in your mind. In five minutes, wow. please. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting her to go all Bulbo Baggins when he wants the <laughs> ring. It's slightly yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, there's uh, two rooms effectively that you haven't looked in the house yet. One in the kitchen, uh, one here in, in the main area. The living a living room, from what you can tell. Furniture kind of thrown around haphazardly. <laughs> Um, looks like it's falling apart, but the floor is covered in hundreds upon hundreds of handprints that have been painted using this crimson mud. Nope. Black walked into that scene with the handprints and like immediately leaves. That is a silly room, and we do not need to go in there again. Well, the other uh, room in the kitchen is a pantry, and there does seem to be a trapdoor leading to a cellar. Ooh. Uh, we love cellars. <laughs> Well, Neblina, your five minutes is up, even though it has been five minutes. Who wants to go into a cell? You just take a quick look inside. I'm not going to search him, but I just want to take a look. Uh, where he is don't want us to go in. Fury? Yeah, I'm going to check this door and this door. Okay, so that's an outdoor leading outside, and there's one other door for one other room. Uh, there's some shutters, large shutters leading into the, the lounge, but that's you've, you've been everywhere now. Okay, so after, are we going to search this upstairs before we go down, or are we going to... Well, okay, it's just answers, no? Venus is starting to go down, currently. Before we go down, I think we should do a couple things. Search some of the rooms, and then I'm going to circle around the house, just to see if there's you know, some big bad thing on the back porch. You're Venus screaming from downstairs, what? <laughs> well, I mean, the... Okay. You, so you don't see the sign of any obvious forms of life here. You can give me a perception check uh, if you'd like to. Because you seem to be doing a full search there. Okay. Uh, now, what you look onto, Pino, is shelves bearing root vegetables, other food stuff, line the walls of an unfinished cellar. You can see that the south wall looks like it's partially collapsed, revealing a dark, uh, narrow tunnel up ahead. Uh, I will put you down here. Twenty one Tempest guy. Hey, don't you have sorry to ruin this too did you have exhaustion or not? Yes oh, you did. did. So it's in disadvantage. Five. I am literally the only person with that exhaustion. Yep. Mm. Oh, and yep. World Twenty is dying for me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you come down into well, a pantry. Uh, sorry to interrupt you there. Uh, the 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 smell here is not nice. Uh, it is slight hints of decay in the air, uh, and there is uh, there's a bit of um, a noise kind of issuing down the tunnel, almost like a hummed tune. <laughs> hey Fury, you want to go first down this dark alleyway thing on the ground? Sure. I will. Thank God, because I forgot sure as hell didn't. I did. I do. Okay. You know it's going down. So, the tunnel okay. is... I mean, it, it looks pretty handmade. It's, it doesn't look very safe, but for the most part, uh, it seems to go around a good couple of corners before opening out in a larger room. And as you are traveling, you can hear this voice... Uh, female voice singing, so stop where you are there, Fury. As you come out into an opening here, uh, you do see this figure up ahead. Uh, a lantern lit room, packed dirt chamber, where the cause of the stench becomes apparent. You can uh, see a figure here in a female, um, in, in a woman, but 
uh, across the way over here on the other side of the cavern a dozen bodies lie strewn across the floor all wearing uh, oh sorry no i'm i'm misreading that they are kind of scattered out uh, around here where you are uh, just around the walls the stench of dead bodies as you can see some of the farmers here uh, all wearing the same kind of clothes as you've seen people from the area wear. So I'm just getting a bit of feedback. Uh, Is it for me? I think it might be. Okay, let me check that out. Uh, the farmers here, you see that their limbs have been cleanly removed. Uh, all their arms. And they've been set into a sizable pile on the far side of the cavern. So basically just a pile of arms from the shoulder down. And in the center of the room, there's this young woman that stands there swaying. And you can hear her singing. It starts to get clearer as you enter the room. It doesn't sound, it it's kind, of, kind of sounds like a child's um, litany or, or some kind of fairy tale. Uh, just like ring around the rosies. You hear this cross patch, lift the latch, sit by the fire and spin. Take a cup and drink it up call your neighbors in and I'm at you're not being stealthy because no one's mentioned that nope. <laughs> stealth roll. so fury this figure kind of turns its head kind of hearing the crunching of sand and stone under your feet and you can see her eyes are not red uh, but there's fatigue around her face and she kind of lifts up a finger Shh, just gives you a shushing sound and looks back to the pile of limbs and begins to sing once more did that solve the problem? There's no more hissing, thank you. I don't know if that was the actual issue, but yeah. Mm. You see a young woman in front of you, and from the descriptions you were given by uh, Aunt Deli, this is most likely Kiana. Oh, she's this is her. Yeah, she seems to be in a dream state. She's holding uh, a knife loosely. Yeah, you can at least see your eyes aren't crimson like the other farmers. Well, I will approach her and try and disarm her and take the. Okay. Well, as soon as you step the into the room, the as soon as you step into the room, she turns. Please go. You shouldn't be here. Yeah, we're gonna go in a minute. First, we're gonna take care of a few things, like this knife in your hand. And I gently remove it from her hand. She oh. is quite... So as you approach her, she doesn't allow you to approach. She kind of takes a step back. What are you doing? You mustn't be here. She's... Oh, she doesn't get that far. If I, she tries, if she moves, I'm going to take the attack of opportunity to grab her and toss her to my allies. As you do, the mound of arms writhes up and lashes out at you. <laughs> you cannot have her. You hear this voice into your mind as we are going straight into initiative. Mm. That's a problem. I have advantage on initiative thanks to Nablino. As you see this strange amalgamation rise up, it is definitely, I mean, it looks to be some kind of undead like being just bits. Uh, well, yeah. you can see the creature there. Uh, I don't like how, no, I don't no. like the depiction of him going for a crow. I don't know what you're trying to <laughs> signal me, <laughs> Nate. <laughs> don't worry, we're fine. You can yeah. kind of Look, Kiana's. We're push... just here to give you a hand if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> like in the moment, Kiana's pushed to the sides and she kind of calls out, "Kali, don't hurt them!" As the creature surges forward. But this combat, we're going to leave for next session. All right. Oh. Okay. But, uh, yeah, at least you've found out what's most likely the problem here. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> you crazy <laughs> fucking girl. <laughs> well, if it's a problem or it's just another guard or something like that. Who knows what this thing is? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of hands. Too many. I mean, she Far too many cold. hands. Yeah, this is getting out of hand. <laughs> Clearly, there's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh... Look, I've had a foot fetishes before, not hand fetishes. <laughs> no. like wait, system. really? You haven't had that? Wait, wait. Who's Kali again? Kali is the childhood yeah. friend that died that has caused her to draw such n um, depressed artwork. She saw him How drowned as die? a child in Cradle Lace Lake, which Drowning. is a place of kind of myth 
uh, amongst the people here. Uh, definitely, while you were traveling, they would have uh, it completely slipped my mind. They would have told you of the story of Cradle Lace Lake. It's got a bit of a history in the land of God's breath. Uh, it was said that uh, the, a sinkhole opened up under the house, and uh, there was a family living there. And uh, the mother, instead of trying to, you know, some of the kids were trapped and couldn't get out. So she had a mental break or something, and she started to pull the rest of her family back into the house so that they would all at least die together. And this is kind of apparently, according to the people, left the whole place like a cursed area. Um, so this is where Kali drowned as well. Yikes. Mm. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll see you next time when you actually have to face this creature. It's going to be a lot of uh, slap of you. And uh, yeah. <coughs> hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. 